All right, what do we got today? Oh, it barely even fits on the table. Oh my God, Nomus, what the hell is that? What do you think it is, man? It's a Neptune 4 Max. Here we have the direct drive extruder. I went ahead and ordered another uh, hot end, the full assembly. It's like 20 bucks. And it comes with a tip and everything just in case we have any issues. I know a few people out there had, you know, the blob of death. Uh, generally, in my opinion, probably caused by bed leveling issues. But uh, just in case, we got one coming. They will warranty that, so we'll have a spare at all times. So as you can see here, here's our dual fan setup. One there, and one there, and then it's got some giant fans on the printer itself. This is a very nice compact design, to be honest. All right, let's go ahead and pull out the upper assembly. So it looks like on here we have three motors. One there, one there, and then one at that corner. These motors are beefy, too. Looks like this is our LED light connection way up here for our LED strip that's under here. Let's move this off to the side. What other goodies do we got? Can't wait to see that big build plate. There it is. Oh my God. There she is, boys and girls. Look at that. Look at the size of that build plate. Boy, that's nice. Metal flex build plate. Make sure and get all the foam out from inside of here. You don't want to turn this machine on with all your foam in there. Belt tension's looking good right out of the box. So some of the things that came inside the packaging, obviously we have some instructions, glue stick, which I personally don't use. I use hairspray myself. We have the extruder. This is gonna be for holding our PLA. Not really sure what that is, but we'll see. Uh, probably for this, I guess. Ah, it's magnetic, okay. That's nice. So your LCD, we really won't use this that much because I like to do wireless printing and I like to use the computer interface or web interface, but uh, it's there. Power cord, obviously. Yeah, they give you something to clean out your tips if you ever get a clog. Oh, cool. They actually give you an extra tip with this. Give you a USB for, I guess, USB printing. Detector switch. We'll have to look up and see what that is. Uh, it's not for homing, because I know these don't have any homing switches, but we'll see what that is. Network cable, so you can hardwire. This is probably for cleaning. Rapid PLA, I don't know what that is, we'll find out. These are going to be all your screws and everything to put this beast together. They give you some zip ties, they give you the tools, and whatever in the hell this is, giveaway. That's just a flash drive, I think. And then we have our wireless antenna. So first things first, we need to get this rack assembly mounted to the printer. So it says right here, before use, you need to remove the spacers that are in here. So there's these plastic spacers that are underneath the bed, along with the foam. Maybe this is the one that people talked about getting the printer jammed up when they tried to use it the first time. So again, you do need to read some basics, right? If there's something big that says notice before use, right, you should probably read that shit. So I would assume these are just throw away. Next, it says you want to check your power supply voltage selection because who knows where this is shipped from. It's not made in the U.S., so we do need to check and make sure it's on 120. So it says right on it that the default setting is 230 volts, and it is, so we need to change that. And if you look at it, it looks a little bit weird. It almost looks like, oh, is the button just ripped off? It's actually way down inside there. So the last thing that they warn you about is they say that your Y-axis slider plate is adjusted at the factory, but they say that it may be loose. So they give you instructions and a tool to tighten it. Um, but basically they say the bed moves smoothly and it doesn't wobble around, then it still stayed adjusted from the factory. They just say in case of like shipping, whatever, but it looks like our bed's okay, so we don't have to adjust it. And then on the back side of that, they give you your auto leveling procedure. So you're definitely gonna wanna keep this, right? Because it'll show you how to auto level the machine. So they say to attach the print head assembly first onto the arms. I don't wanna do that because it'll be a little bit fiddly, so we're gonna attach the arms first and then put the print head on. 
Myself personally, there is not pre-installed Loctite on here. I am absolutely going to be putting Loctite on all these bolts because these machines shake a lot. And shaking makes bolts come loose. So Loctite everything. Word of advice that I've not seen anybody else really do. So we're going to hang the bed off the table so that we can get to these bolt locations. It's pretty easy to see by the writing and the laser etching which way that this needs to face, right? But you want your belts in the back and your motors in the back. Again, put some Loctite on. All right, let's flip it around and do the other side. Just make sure and lift with your back, you know. Well, we already have this side exposed. We might as well go ahead and put the antenna on. All right, let's go ahead and get our supports mounted up. These are the screws and washers, and again, Loctite. Also, again, you want to get these things really freaking tight. Okay, let's flip the printer around and do the other side. So detector switch apparently means that this is going to be our sensor for our PLA. All right, let's go ahead and get this big beefy fan installed on here. So the bed is already plugged in. I did go ahead and plug in these three down here. Uh, you have your filament sensor and then a couple of your LEDs and then your stepper motor, right? There's no way to screw them up. They're all individually different plugs. I went ahead and plugged in this stepper motor over here on this side. And then I also, on the main cable, went ahead and plugged in this stepper motor here. And then this cable is going to be for our big fan unit here. So we'll go ahead and get that plugged in. I also went ahead and put this rack on up here. You just have a couple of screws and then I put the filament sensor on. That's the orientation for it. And apparently it's supposed to be completely loose. And then I plugged it in. And again, belt tension feels good back here as well as on the bed. If you need to move this rail up and down, my rail was completely all the way to the top. You can just move these with this belt or you can grab a hold of one of these and actually turn it. So it looks like most everything in the back. So let's flip it back around and then let's go ahead and get our extruder installed. Okay, so follow the directions and put this on after you put your extruder on or else you just have to take it right back off. I will say there's quite a few screws in this kit that are really freaking short. So if it does vibrate a lot and you didn't use Loctite, yeah, it may not work out too well. So these ones that hold this upper brace are literally like four or six millimeter. They are tiny. And then these ones that hold this on, they seem like they're pretty long, but they have to go through a whole bunch of metal before they start screwing into the fitting that's on this extruder. So only like that much of it is screwing into the extruder. Definitely Loctite, guys. All right, so we got our extruder all attached. We went ahead and plugged in the cable and got it through this little cable holder. Then I went ahead and mounted the screen holder. Like I said, it is magnetic. And then we can plug in our screen, all right? There really is not a lot of stuff to these printers. Most of the bulk of it is inside of here and with the belt system and all that, and all that's already built for you. Now we can go ahead and put our fan system back on and get it plugged back in. Okay, last thing, I really didn't like their little clip system here, but I still went ahead and mounted it. I just used zip ties to hold the cabling. I didn't like, I mean, this is already pretty close, but uh, it was basically touching. And then I went ahead and secured this as well, the fan wire, a little bit more uh, on the outside, because that was, once you get really close to the top, that was actually hitting this as well. So, not liking their clip system, but easily fixed with a couple of zip ties. All right, guys, that is it. She is built. Let's go ahead and power it on, make sure that everything's working, and then that's kind of it for the unboxing and build. You can generally get these printers built in about 30 minutes. So we took the printer over to its resting place, and uh, you just want to make sure wherever you set this printer that all of your feet are on the table and the whole thing is very, very sturdy. Most of the time, you're actually going to want to mount your table to a wall. That way, it is absolutely sturdy. And then you want to take your bed and you want to push it in its furthest back position. And you want to make sure that nothing is hitting anywhere. Let's go ahead and get it plugged in and fired up and connected to the network. Let's go ahead and grab a roll of PLA so we can do, you know, maybe like a test benchy or something like that. 
All right, let's go ahead and flip it on for the first time and hopefully nothing explodes. All right, guys, she's all built. I went ahead into the menu after it booted up and I went into the light control and I turned on both of the lights. All right. And then we'll go in and we'll get Wi-Fi set up soon. But uh, that's what she looks like. Pretty fucking awesome. Thing is gigantic. Just as a reference, this is the build plate on the old one. Although, this is an amazing printer. That's the comparison with the new one. Wow. Okay, let's go ahead and run through the leveling calibration for the Neptune 4 Max. So first you want to make sure and get your bed to 60 and your hot end to whatever you would normally print it. I'm just going to do 220. We would click on level. Now this says this operation is going to trigger the return to zero. Confirm. So it's going to drop it all the way down to what it calls zero. You are going to want a piece of paper, just normal printer paper. Let's go ahead and check the Z offset, which is just gonna be with a piece of paper again. So I cannot get underneath the nozzle at all. So we need to come up. Okay, so now it's where there's resistance. It's catching on the nozzle, but it's not catching a lot. Okay, so now that we have our Z offset set, we're gonna go to auxiliary first and say confirm because we're going to do the manual bed leveling first, which is with these little knobs down here, right? You have six of them, three on each side. So we just wanna to go to number one, and you wanna have a piece of paper already sitting at number one. And as we can see, we are not touching at all. And so on these little things here, you can actually see it has an arrow for up and down. So I'm not touching at all, so I wanna go up. So I wanna turn it clockwise. Okay, so we turn it clockwise until the paper doesn't move at all. And then we're gonna counterclockwise a couple of turns. Let's go back clockwise. Back counter a little bit. That feels really good right there. So that's just one point, right? Now we gotta go to point two. And I can't feel a damn thing there, so we need to go clockwise. Now we have so much resistance that it won't move. Now we go counterclockwise. Okay, there we go, we have slight resistance. I'm gonna have to set the phone down for these, but you get the idea um, because I need two hands. Okay, I actually went through them three times because I had some slight adjustment issues. Let's go ahead to the next step. So we would actually just hit back here. So it'll say that you're leaving manual leveling and that it's going, if you press confirm, it's going to go into the auto leveling sequence, which we do want. And it's just saying that that will clear the previous data of any auto leveling that you had before. So we're going to say confirm on that. So it's going to heat the bed and the hot end, which I already had them heated. You should heat your bed and your hot end when you do any leveling whatsoever. Because again, heating everything expands, cooling everything contracts. This stuff is always hot when it's running. So you want to take all your calibrations when it's at full temperature. So it's going to heat up the bed here. And then as you can see, there's 36 points that it's going to check on the bed. So it has sensors underneath here. Uh, as far as I could tell, there's actually two of them. You have one right here, and then you actually have one right there. So it's going to use these sensors to go through all these different points on the bed, right? It's going to start from point number one. So before we only had six points, right? Because the center of the bed is fixed. You cannot adjust it. So now being there's 36, it's gonna do point number one there, touch it twice with a sensor, touch it twice with a sensor for point number two, point number three, again, double tap, four, double tap, five, double tap, and then six, double tap. 
Now it's going to go through all 36 points. We're not going to sit here and watch it all because it does take about 10 or 15 minutes. It's actually not that bad. And then we'll come back when it's done. And then we'll go ahead and push a print to it make sure that it's printing correctly. Okay, again, so it says check your Z-offset one more time after it does the censored calibration. So I already checked that. It's still accurate. We can say confirm, right? And then we can see it did change everything because I know this one was like 0.26 up here at the top in blue. So it has changed. It's kept our Z offset at 1280. And now we can go ahead and click the save button and then say confirm. And there we go, it has saved it. But we can go ahead and come back in here, say confirm. And now we can confirm that all of our settings have saved and they have because this one is still 0.12 and that's what it was. So excellent, that is completely calibrated. Let's push out a print. Okay, so we're only about 45 minutes into the build. Everything's done. The bed leveling is completely over. Let's go ahead to print. I just popped in the included USB. That way it's already got a nested file on there, sliced and everything. Um, let's go to model and let's just do a 3D Benchy. Confirm. I said 19 minutes. Wow. That would be like lightning fast. My other printer takes about, what, 40, 50 minutes? That beefy fan system has kicked on. Holy shit, that printed fast. And I didn't use any kind of a brim or anything on the surface to make it stick better. And honestly, that is probably the nicest looking benchy that I've ever printed. <clears throat> and it was on the very first print. Within 50 minutes of unboxing this, I clicked print. And it sustained 500 millimeters per second for the majority of the print. But it shifted from 60 to 120 to 250 to 500. But it was at 500 a lot. This thing was just flying around like I've never seen before. Very, very impressed so far. All right, guys, so that's going to wrap it up for the initial review on the Neptune 4 Max. Um, I'm blown away. This thing is amazing. It was super easy to set up. Like I said, 50 minutes. Open the box and click print within 50 minutes. And then it printed that, right? That's pretty freaking good. So we're going to go and install a slicer and slice up some stuff and make some more files for this that aren't just their test files. That were already on the flash drive but as far as the initial review goes that's it for today and stunning out of the box stunning as always